Hello, my name is Darren Thomas, and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to learn how to use lasso regression with Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So if you've been watching the videos in the past, we previously did ridge regression. Lasso regression is also a part of that same family of you know regular, regularization of algorithms, if that's what you want to call them, in which you are able to uh, modify the coefficients of the independent variables based on you know stuff that's happening inside the algorithm which is kind of beyond the scope of this video so basically the difference between ridge and lasso was that with ridge you don't fully remove the influence of an independent variable this means that if you have a lot of variables they're still all going to be there even if their weight is very very low and so, you know, you might improve your prediction or your whatever you're trying to do in, in terms of your regression, but your ability to determine what's important and not is kind of limited a little bit when you still have all those variables there. The benefit of lasso is that if a particular variable or feature, whatever term you want to use, is not that important in terms of the, the you know, output of the model, that the coefficient or the weight of that particular variable will be reduced all the way essentially to zero. This would allow you to remove variables from the model for whatever purposes. Now, this is very, very beneficial when you have lots and lots of variables and you're trying to find ways to remove some of them, all right, to be able to better explain what's going on in your model if you have to share it with someone else who may not be as comfortable with all the details of how algorithms work. So we're going to have to use a, a data set called CA schools, California schools, and we're going to be trying to predict something in particular here that we'll discuss in a moment. But of course, we're going to have the same three steps. We're going to prepare our data right here. Then we're going to have our baseline model and our lasso regression model. So right here, you can see that we're going to run some code down here. We're going to, of course, uh, download some information from Pi dataset. That's where our data comes from. NumPy, Pandas like normal. Then in line four, we're going to set up our linear regression. That is for our baseline model primarily. Mean square error is our metric. The grid search is going to be useful to determine what value we have to set the hyperparameter for the lasso algorithm, which is going to be, I believe it's called alpha. We'll find it when we get there. Uh, and so we're going to use grid search for that. And then, of course, we in line seven, you can see the actual lasso uh, function right there. So the data preparation is rather simple if you think about it. We don't have to do much here. All we got to do is just load it because this data was pretty clean coming straight from the from the actual data set. Oh wait, I got to run the first line first, sorry. Okay, now this will be nice and clean down here. There we go. So all we did here is in the first line, we loaded our actual data set and then what we're going to do is we're going to try to predict test scores. That's down here. And so we set that, of course, aside in the Y object. That's where our dependent variable is. And all these guys here in line two are our independent variables. Again, if you want details on these, you can look at uh, the Pi data set. Use the, uh, the argument show doc equals true, and you can find the details on these. But some of these are like uh, the number of students who are on like a meal plan, the number of computers, the, the amount of money spent per student, et cetera. So now we're going to move to making our baseline model. And the whole purpose of this is that we want to see if lasso improves or maybe even perhaps compromises our, our output here if we just use regular regression. So again, all this is the same as in the previous video. There's not a whole lot to say here. Line one, we kind of set up our linear regression. Then we fit our model in line two, line three. We uh, set up our, our various um, uh, aspects for the uh, actual output, if you will. And then we have the first model down here where we measure the, the performance based on the mean squared error. And then, of course, we do our prediction here versus our, our true outputs. And then we calculate the actual mean squared error right here, 69. And then we're going to take a quick look at the coefficients so that we can compare them. This will be important later. Now, I'm not going to explain this for loop because, you know, that's kind of beyond the scope of the video because you can look at these individually. But if you just set this up, as you can see in the actual, you know, video, 
you'll get this little output right here. So these are all the coefficients for the various independent variables. Uh, you can see that for yourself. We're going to compare these to the lasso model in a second. Now for the lasso model, there are several things we have to do. It's a little bit more cumbersome. So what we're going to do here is set this up. So in the first line, we just set up our lasso uh, in instance and we normalize it to true. That means we want to like standardize the results, standardize the results, excuse me. In line two and three, we set up our search criteria because we need to figure out what is the best value for alpha. That's our friend right here. And so we're going to set up a value between the log space of negative five to positive two. And we're going to have eight different values that is going to randomly pick uh, the score. In other words, how are we going to know if our parameter is good? Our hyperparameter is going to be based on the, on the mean squared error. The lower the value, the better. And then, of course, we're going to do a, a, a cross validation of it uh, tenfold. And then down here, we do the actual search right here. So when we run this, we're not going to see anything except the output, but not the results just yet. We're going to get to that in a second. Now, this is where we get to see the next line. In the next line, we're going to see, OK, what score is best for our alpha? And what score could we expect if we use that alpha? And you're going to see that, you know, there's going to be some problems here, but we're just practicing. So if we set our alpha to, you know, one to the 10 to the negative five, one times 10 to the negative five, which is basically zero, we'll get an alpha of 85. This is of course much higher than the alpha, of, or excuse me, we'll get a mean square error of 85. And this is much higher than the mean square error of 69. So in this particular situation, lasso regression is probably not the best approach, especially when you cross validate your results to try to see what you can expect if you ran this model on a new data set. So we're not doing very good here. However, our goal really wasn't to make an awesome lasso regression model, but to see how to go through the process of using it. So that's okay. Now we're just going to run this. So here we set up our lasso model. This is just like what we did with the regression model, but you know, we set our alpha basically to zero. So this is essentially a regression model. And then, you know, we fit our data in line two. Then we make our second model where we uh, try to see the results for the mean square error. Uh, y true is going to be the Y independent variable. And then we got to go to our prediction right here. And then we print the results. And so you can see we almost got the exact same number as when we just ran the regular regression. There are several reasons for this. Number one, the alpha is basically zero. We're talking one times 10 to the negative five. That's basically zero. So when it's basically set to zero, you're going to get a regression output. That's kind of what's happening here. And so you can see that we almost got the exact same number. Let's see here. If I go back up, you can see oh, it's like exactly the same. 69.07, 69.0. It's the exact same number. And that is the reason because the alpha doesn't have any influence in this particular example. Now, if we run the coefficients, there is one small change. And we're going to take a look at it here. You can see that teachers has been set to zero. Now, it's hard to see right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this on a different screen. So if you look right here. The top results are for the regular regression model and the bottom results are for the lasso regression. So mostly the same, but you can see teachers, it was almost zero in the regression model, but it's definitely zero now. It's 9.79 times 10 to the negative five. So it, it's, been, it's been zoned out. The rest of the numbers are primarily the same. So the one major improvement that we have with the lasso regression model is that we were able to simplify our model by removing the teacher variable or the teacher feature, whatever you want to call it. So teacher was not useful. It wasn't very useful in the regression model, but it was not removed because you have to do that yourself. But with the last regression, it was clearly removed while most of the other values stayed the same. So that's essentially it for this particular video. I'm going to go back and try to summarize what we talked about and conclude this. So in this video, we learned about how to approach setting up a lasso regression model using Python. And so the primary uh, purpose of lasso regression is that it allows you to remove values through, you know, through a process of regularization or shrinkage, whatever term you want to use, remove variables that, you know, or remove the coefficient of, of variables based on, you know, the, uh, the mathematics within the algorithm, which again, we never talked about. So 
We started by preparing our model. We set up our baseline regression model because we're trying to improve based off the performance of the baseline regression. And what I mean by baseline, just traditional ordinary least squares regression. From there, we got the coefficients for ordinary least square regression, and then we went into our lasso. We had to do a um, some hyperparameter tuning here, and we had to use a, gr a grid search, see a grid search for cross validation purposes, and we were able to set our alpha essentially to zero, you know. And when we did that, we got a mean square error of 85, which is actually higher. And so after that, we actually ran our model using lasso and we got the same results basically as regression the main difference was is that the lasso regression model removed the influence of the teacher's variable completely whereas the ordinary least squares regression model did not make that uh that that move that's the main difference so i hope that this very this video made sense and you were able to understand what we talked about and you can use these tools as you go forward my name is darren thomas I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.